Hi everyone! In this tutorial, we're going to be making the My Little Cupcake Crochet Hat available for free on my blog at cafe.craft.com. For this tutorial, you're going to need a 5.0mm crochet hook, a yarn needle, a pair of scissors, a pom-pom maker, and three colors of your choosing. One for the frosting, one for the wrapping, and one for the pom-pom. It is important that you do a gauge before starting. You should have 10 double crochets equal to 10 centimeters or 4 inches and 5 rows equal to 10 centimeters or 4 inches. If your tension does not meet the gauge, adjust your tension or hook size in order to meet the gauge. Begin by creating a slip knot and chaining 22. If you are making a different size, do the number of chains indicated. Begin working in the third chain from the hook. We're going to create our first DC by yarning over, inserting our hook into the third chain, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through the last two loops. This creates the first double crochet. Do not count the chain twos as a, DC, a double crochet. Crochet 20 double crochets. Once you have reached the end, chain 2 and turn. For the rest of this piece, we will be working in the back loop only. As I'm showing here, the top of the stitches make a V. You're going to be working in the back part of the V. Our first stitch will be a decrease, so you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the back loop, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Then you're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and pull through two. Pull through all the loops in your hook to complete the stitch. From here, do 17 double crochets in the back loop only. Once you have finished 17 double crochets in the back loop only, you're going to do a double crochet increase in the last stitch space. Chain 2, enter a new piece. You should have 20 stitches total. For row 3, we're going to be doing row 2 in reverse, so we'll be beginning with a double crochet increase in the back loop only, the first stitch. At this point, I suggest grabbing a stitch marker and marking this side of your piece so that you know which side you'll be increasing on. Continue the row by working 17 double crochets in the back loop only. In the last two stitch spaces, we will be doing a double crochet together, or decrease, in the back loop only. At this point, you'll be able to notice the work slanting towards one direction. This will give the appearance of twisted frosting. Chain 2, and turn. Continue working by repeating rows 2 and 3 until you have 27 rows total. This is about 12 repeats. If you are working a different size, be sure to pay attention to how many repeats you will need to do in order to reach the size required. Let me interrupt this video for my adorable baby girl, Belle, who has decided to get involved. And then she's just the cutest oh, baby girl. And for those wondering, my furls crochet hook was fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Once you have completed 27 rows, you continue on to row 28. You will start with a double crochet together, 17 double crochets, and a double crochet increase as a last stitch. Remember to work all these stitches in only the back loops. Fasten off your piece, but do not cut the yarn yet. Make sure your piece measures roughly 56 centimeters. Be sure that you include both ends of the piece and not just the main section. Fold your project in half so the first row we began with and the last row we ended with are able to line up. Because they are slanted, you may have to wiggle them a bit. Once the edges are aligned, slip stitch the piece together, working in both loops. Once you have finished slip stitching the piece together, fasten off and cut a very long tail so that you may sew the top of the hat together. This is our seam once the piece is all sewn together and you can see it blends in very well. In order to cinch the hat tight at the top of the hat below the pom pom, I recommend going in between each of the first double crochet. So if you have a row that starts with chains, go into the next stitch so you get the double crochets. This will give you the most secure fasten. Continue going in and out of each row until you reach the end. You can pull tight and begin to secure the top of the hat closed. This is how your piece should look at the end of the frosting section. Hold your hat so that your seam is facing you and attach your yarn to the first row. Chain one and work a single crochet together into the first two chains of that row. In the next row, crochet two single crochets into the DC at the row's edge. You will notice that the stitches on the row's edges that you would do a single crochet decrease are chains. So this makes it easy to do a single crochet decrease as you can pull up a loop from each chain. And then the increases are the rows that begin with a double crochet. Although we do not count the chain two in the frosting section as a stitch, we can work into them without worrying about adding extra length. For the next four rows, you'll be repeating this sequence. Chain two, and do two double crochets, and then a front post double crochet. Make sure that you pay attention to where the front post of a crochet is. 
so that you can go into the correct stitch on the next repeat. Put a stitch marker on the last stitch of the last row of the rubber section. With the seam facing you, count to the left 7 stitches. Count 7 stitches from the left of the last stitch marker and place another. Use different colors to help you distinguish which one is the beginning and which one is the end. With the hat facing towards you again, count to the right 15 stitches. On the 15th stitch, attach the beginning stitch marker. Count to the left 7 stitches and attach your ending stitch marker. You can see now that the ear flaps are evenly spaced. Attach your yarn to the first stitch marker A. This will be the beginning of one ear flap. Chain 2 and double crochet into the same stitch. Again, we are not counting the chain 2's as stitches, as they are simply there to add height. Do another double crochet and then a front post double crochet. We are going to be continuing the pattern from the, the wrapper section. Your last double crochet will be in the same stitch base as your ending stitch marker. Cut the yarn and fasten off. I do not suggest going back and forth with this part. You will get a much better look if you do each row facing the same direction. For row 2, you will be decreasing in the first two double crochets.
can't say last twice. A fast and easy way to weave in the ends for this part is to crochet over the ends of the previous row. This way you only have to weave in the ends for the last row. For row 3, we will be doing one double crochet to the same space as our chain 2. Followed by a front post double crochet. To avoid the ear flap from leaning towards one side, the last two double crochets of row 3 will be a decrease. In row 4, we will be beginning with a double crochet into the same stitch as our chain 2, followed by a front post double crochet, and then a double crochet decrease. You should have a double crochet, a front post double crochet, a double crochet decrease, a front post double crochet, and a double crochet at the end. Cut the yarn and weave in the end. Cut 18 pieces of yarn with the same color as the wrapper section to be 20 inches. I would suggest doing this in two parts, so cut 9 pieces of yarn so it's easier to separate into 3 sections of 3. Your pieces do not have to be exact as we will be trimming them at the end anyways. Separate the strands into 6 groups of 3 strands. Attach the first group to the first double crochet, the second group to the double crochet decrease, and the third group to the last double crochet of round 4. Pull them to they are about even and then begin to braid them. Braid the strands tightly so they do not come apart when being worn.
finish the braid, select two of the longest strands, one from each side of the braid, cross them in the front to the back, and tie them in the back twice. Trim the ends to be uniform. Repeat this section for the other ear flap. Depending on which size hat you are making, chain the corresponding number of chains. These chains are worked in multiples of 6. Begin by chaining 84 and working a double crochet into the third chain from our hook. I suggest working in the back bump for this part. It is not necessary, but I believe it gives it a cleaner edge. Work four more double crochets into the same space. Skip two chains and work a slip stitch into the third. This completes the first shell. Skip two chains from the slip stitch and continue working five double crochets into the same chain. Continue this sequence until you have reached the end of your chain. After you have completed the last shell, tie off your yarn and cut a very long tail for sewing. Beginning at the seam of the frosting part, align your first shell with the seam and the next two rows. Each shell is roughly the length of two rows. Begin sewing the shells to the piece so that each shell is aligned with two rows of the frosting section. After you have attached the last shell to the piece, create a small whip stitch for the first shell to lock it in place. Because we are using the same yarn as the frosting section, I suggest moving in your ends into the frosting row right above the last stitch.
add a pom pom for a finishing touch. Thank you so much for watching. This pattern can be found for free on my blog at cafedelcraft.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. 